Right you guys, today we're going to be taking a look at how we can resolve the USB device overcurrent status detected. System will shut down after 15 seconds. And this is what you're going to keep getting and it will be a spontaneous reboot where you're continu continually rebooting and shutting down every 15 seconds. And we're going to take a look at how we can resolve that in today's video. So let's get started and uh, we'll resolve this issue today. Okay, so what we're going to do here is go through some troubleshooting steps to resolve this issue. And uh, we can take a look at the PC here and go through some of those. So first off, what you want to try and do is remove all of the USB uh, cables from the computer. And these will be uh, included on top of the case here. And also at the back of the case. So next up, what you want to do is check the USB ports. Make sure all the USB ports have got no uh, signs of damage, i.e. burning, or any broken parts inside there, because sometimes these do break off and you can get an issue, like the little plastic part breaks off in there, or you may have a part of the USB device which is connected to this break off in there as well. Just make sure you've got none of that grounding strap that's going across in there from the IO shield plate going into the actual USB port as well and make sure that everything is okay with the USB ports uh, before you continue to the next step. Now you want to make sure that you've removed all of the uh, USB cables and check every single port including the ones on the front uh, of the uh, case as well. So once you've done that and you've uh, worked out that the USB ports look okay uh, visibly to you you can then move on to the next step. So now what we're going to do is take a look inside here and you will see a big USB 3.0 cable here or you may see a smaller USB cable which is more on the older type which are connected down the bottom here. So let me just show you this one. So you've got this big cable here which is USB 3.0 which is connected to the front of the uh, case USB ports. And down here sometimes you'll see them. Let me just get a, a zoom in here. Down here you'll see on the motherboard you'll see a little plug that plugs into here and it will say USB on there and you want to remove those from there and sometimes these are connected to the front of the case. So let me show you exactly where that is. Here is your front panel and this has got your USB ports here. Make sure you pull these out and check here. Now this is the common area where these foul and the reason for it is sometimes these are a lower grade USB port and they do fail or they break or people plug in cheap uh, USB flash drives and stuff like that and they can fail. Uh, so here you want to check. Now if you want to uh, bypass this you can do you can pull the cable out of the case and that cable is running to here which I've showed you previously. This is where it runs to but you can get a tiny little riser board plug that into your motherboard and it will have a USB power on it and you can run that USB cable to a brand new um, tiny little hub thing that goes into the front of your DVD ROM uh, bay there and you'll be able to use uh, one of those and they go into your front panel. So basically you're just getting power to that by using that method. So that's a lot easier to use and you can see this is a back a tiny riser board here for the back of the computer but you do get ones for the front which I'll show you in a second uh, and you can just replace them in this DVD uh, ROM area here there's two blank panels or four or five or depending on what case you've got and you can use those to replace it so let me remove this panel now you can always uh, replace one of these slots here with a USB and you can put them in and I'll show you an example on the screen you can purchase one of these instead of using the top one on the case here if that has failed and then you just do the same thing you would route this cable this brand because it comes with its own new cable and you run that to the board now nine times out of ten that will resolve the issue uh, but if it's a failure with the board uh, port on there then you would have to replace that area there or buy a riser board uh, which would then um, bypass that area there on the board there. So for instance I'll show you an example on the screen right now you can see like a little tiny riser board that slots into the uh, motherboard and then you can get power to, from that to here or you can use that as a uh, at the back of the computer but if you wanted something at the front that's the only option you've got. 
So another thing you want to do here is check all your USB devices now that are plugged into the computer. So if you've got something like this plugged in, and you can see there, there's a, a distinct bend in that uh, USB there, and it is damaged. Now, this can cause a problem, and uh, what will happen is there's a function on the board that says halt the uh, boot process if there is an error, uh, and this could be something to do with your USB ports, and if you've got a damaged uh, component plugged into that USB port, it might not be the USB port itself or a cable or anything like that. It could be an actual device that you've got plugged in just like this one here. And this can cause an issue. So any of these you want to uh, discard and replace if this is what's causing the problem. So definitely check those out. And the problem is with PC repair techs, uh, sometimes you can't foresee what's in the person's house because they'll bring the computer to your workshop and then what will happen is you will go working on the uh, computer and everything will work fine and that's because you haven't got the bad device that's plugged into it now sometimes I go to people's uh, properties and you will see they will have hubs all plugged in there and they're trying to run power with no no added power to that USB hub and it can cause a load of problems and they've got a ton of stuff plugged into it and that's all drawing power and that can cause a lot of problems so you want to bypass all that and pull it all out and uh, there is better hubs out there with added power which go to a wall outlet which uh, is much more better to use so check all those and make sure any usb device uh, something like this is not damaged and not broken uh, because this can cause an issue so next up, again, check your uh, CMOS battery. This is another common area which uh, people tend to forget. And your CMOS battery is this little silver disc, as you can see down here. And uh, what you want to do is turn the computer off and remove that from the computer uh, for a minute or so, and then plug it back in. You can also clear the CMOS with a little jumper here. On modern motherboards, there's a little jumper or a button you can push. And, uh, and that will clear the CMOS. Uh, also, you can go into the BIOS and uh, reset to defaults and try that as well. And sometimes that can cause an issue if you've got a, a rogue setting in there that's not uh, causing an issue. Uh, that's another way of resolving this issue. So there's loads of things that you can check uh, on that. So if you do have a bad USB port, you can always get those uh, riser boards and stuff like that. But that is the simplest way of resolving this issue. It's very unlikely uh, that it's going to be a hardware fault, i.e. CPU or anything like that um, uh, for over voltage. Now, there is a CPU one that says over voltage, and that can be due to uh, overclocking and stuff like that. But we'll cover that in another video. So one last thing to try as well, which you can do to save a bit of time to help diagnose, is to remove any USB cable from the front of the machine here, which is the front of the case. And sometimes it's down here at the bottom, which I've already mentioned. It will say USB, just pull the cable out and leave it out. And then plug in uh, just your keyboard, your USB keyboard and your USB mouse, and then boot up the computer and see if it works. And if it does work, then you can just uh, go backwards and plug in each device until you get a working computer. And then obviously you will get to the end where you would know exactly what's failed there. So it's just a basically uh, eliminating uh, the bad uh, components or bad uh, cable or whatever it is that way. So that's the only way you can go ahead and do that. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. I hope this one helps you out, guys. My name is Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. If you need any more help, you can always head over to the forums, and I'll be glad to try and give you some advice over there. Anyway, thanks again for watching, guys. Bye for now.